Okay. Um, just a a question or two as we begin. Have any of you had a run in with someone? Maybe it was a coworker. Maybe it was a, somebody in authority. Maybe it was the the boss. And uh, did you resolve the run in? Did you come to it without someone else stepping in, maybe holding you back from blows or whatever? Oh, hope it didn't come to that. Hope it didn't come to that, but just, just uh, think about that. If you can think of a time when that might have happened, um, share it with us. As adults? As adults, as uh, young Young people, whatever. I'll just share one that uh, that I had a number of years ago. Uh, for a few years, we were in partnership with a uh, peach farm. We had peaches. Mm -hmm. And we had peaches that we had to sell direct to the public. And so we had... Uh, refrigerated trucks, 18 wheelers. We actually had over, over 30 tons of peaches that we would try to sell. And that uh, was quite an experience. But during the off time, during the winter time, you didn't have anything because this was strictly peaches, nothing else. So we decided uh, to do what's called sub hauling. So you go out and get jobs from other companies that need trailers transported from one place to another. And I was transporting places, some, some things from, from one port to another port in the Central Valley of California. And there were other drivers who were not like me. They were not sub hauling, they were union. And maybe you can get an idea of what I ran into. They were union. And there were about five of them. And uh, I noticed one, once or twice, that they would be talking together. And then when I came up, they would be quiet. And I wondered, no, not, not sure. I was not a part of their group. And so I knew that uh, they probably weren't going to talk to me too much. And then one day after I had made my delivery, parked my trailer, and went in to put my paperwork into the boss, a group of them, about five of them, sort of surrounded me. <laughs> and they said, uh, you know, you're making us look bad. I said, what are you talking about? You're doing too many loads you shouldn't be doing it more loads than we're doing. And I had noticed that. For every three loads that I did, so they I did, did one load. And so I told them outright, I said, look guys, <laughs> you get paid if you do one load or 10 loads. I don't get paid unless I do a lot of loads. And uh, they grumbled and griped and uh, sort of told me I needed to uh, change what I was doing. And I said, uh, well, I'll think about it. You guys don't, don't need to worry about me. Just worry about yourself. You know, you could, you could do more loads and maybe the boss would notice that you're doing more loads and give you a bonus. They didn't take too good look to that. So I went in and talked to the boss for about five minutes and I told him, you know, what's, what's going on. And he said, uh, don't worry about them. They're not going to bother you anymore. And they didn't. Mm -hmm. So I, I look at that as uh, sometime when I was not able to take care of it. And then I think about all the things that I came uh, into when I was a principal. I had to go between the teachers 
and sometimes the parents, the teachers, and sometimes the students. And I had to be the authority figure. Can you think of any time when you might have had a, a not exactly like mine, but some some kind of an experience where you had some confrontation, maybe with an authority figure or with uh, someone else? Anybody? Well, I, I had to intervene in a hospital mm -hmm. when I was CEO. Um, a, a surgeon and his wife worked the same operation and <clears throat> the surgeon who was very well known slapped his wife in in the in the operating room oh my <clears throat> and, so they called my office to tell me that this man was beating on his wife in the operating room wow and i i, I had to go up and intervene oh <laughs> Mm -hmm. I've never done anything like that before, but I told him if he if he stepped back across the line, I was gonna pop him. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I, I threatened I had to kick him off the medical staff. And um I mean the imagine you know beating on your wife. Yeah, He's a professional. Mm -hmm. the operating room with some patient is trying to get help uh, and he, he 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 had a temper and uh i just i told him we were gonna weren't gonna tolerate that uh, but I, was, I was I, yeah i kicked him off the staff Good. i almost kicked him otherwise too <laughs> <laughs> that's my jam yeah uh, i had to ask forgiveness for that because <laughs> Anybody else have an experience like that? Okay, tonight I want us to start just a little bit back of a few verses. I want us to look at um, Acts 3, 17 to 20. Peter is speaking, and he's not mincing his words at all. What was the reaction of the people to what Peter was saying, and what was the reaction of the Jewish leaders? Would someone read these few verses? Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, then, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Wow. What do you think the reaction of the people would have been to something like this? Any ideas? Any thoughts? I think without the special help of the Holy Spirit, they would have been extremely irate and, and um, angry. But I was just reading not long ago um, in Patriarchs and Prophets, how uh, the spirit, when the spirit of God came to the apostles, it spread over the people that they were speaking with and their hearts were changed. And so mostly they, I should say the most of them would um, say, well, yes, we agree. What can we do? What, what should we do to make things right? There were always a few who didn't accept that and became bitter, but I don't think that any of them would have been able to face it and ask, well, you know, what can we do to make this right if the spirit hadn't been there with them? Mm, true. Anybody else have a thought on that? What well, about I think I think he was very diplomatic in the way that he was speaking to them and, you know, giving them the benefit of the doubt because you acted in ignorance. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Now you know better and you should repent. And so he wasn't, you know, he was accusing them, but I, I don't know that, you know, that they took it that way. I think it would be a little hard for the priest and, and rulers to think that you're calling them ignorant, though, <laughs> uh, especially in front of other people. Yeah, that, that was pretty strong, wasn't it? Was, it was strong. Well, he was talking to the general general people, it says, you Israelites, you acted in, in ignorance, as did your leaders. So yeah, it's in the temple he did this, though. So. Yeah. Okay. And the they the uh the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the all they would have, they would have found out about this. They would have known it eventually, pretty yeah. quickly, probably. Hugo had a thought. Hugo. Just a question. I wonder why it is that Peter uh, pointed them. He was one of the group. He was an Israelite too, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I didn't use the word we. Yeah. Was, you. That's right. Uh, maybe that was typical of Peter. A thought came to me. I wonder if any of these were in the crowd that said, crucify him, crucify him. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But what about those leaders? What would they have thought when they either heard it in person or found out about it later? It was, gonna do, it was gonna do one of two things, yes. Angry, anger. Anger. Anything else? Or cut to the heart and repentant, one or two, either. Yeah, the, the, the same words can do one or the other. Mm -hmm. You can learn from your mistakes, or it can harden your heart. You think about Judas. Mm -hmm. He really had no excuse, did he? But the words of Christ, instead of softening his heart, hardened his heart. Okay, several of you have been added to us. Kirk, welcome. Uh, Norm and Kristen. And, uh, and Maria. Maria, did you hey. get on by yourself, Maria? <laughs> oh, oh, but you're <laughs> muted. <laughs> There I you said, go. yes, yes, believe it or not. <laughs> Good, for you. Good, Good job. Good job, Maria. Yeah. Well, my daughter had to give me some and some some instruction from the background because they That's changed okay. something on the screen. But I did it. You did it. Good good for you. Kirk. <laughs> okay. And Kirk, to see your alley place, Captain. Yeah. How about? <laughs> Live long uh, and prosper. Oh, no, that was the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we want to look at Prospect. Acts 4. We're going to be going through Acts 4 and verses 1 through 22. So we want to start with Acts 4, verse 1. If you can put that up. <laughs> if someone will uh, read this. Um... The priest and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. Oh, somebody had alerted somebody, didn't they? Yeah. The captain of the temple guard. Now, was that going to be perhaps show authority? Is he going to have um, a sword? I, I just wonder, the captain of the guard of the time. I, I don't know exactly. I couldn't find anything specifically about, you know, what, what was their position? Did they carry arms? Did they uh, have a specific task? Well, like the, definitely to keep the peace. Keep the mm -hmm. peace. Mm -hmm. I think the temple guards have had weapons. Okay. I, I mean, I, that's what I see sometimes is you don't know how true what you see on TV. Is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they were authority figures. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, Jack, that 
it was a little bit of a tinderbox, you know. I think they there were some that were thinking that Jesus was probably more dangerous dead now that he's gone than when he was here. Mm -hmm. Everybody was a little, little on edge, you know, the authorities with Jesus' followers. Speaking of the temple guards, you know, I don't think that that was particularly in the um, the uh, instructions that Moses was given for how to um, to run things in in this in the in the um, in the sanctuary. That was something that they added uh, later on through I don't know for what reason, but um, that there's always that problem when you don't. It, you don't depend on God to protect and, and take care of his, his property. You have to have guards, armed guards to do that. That, that was not God's plan. I don't think. I, I don't either. I, I, it could I, be the times in which they were living. We, we kind of have a, a temple guard. <laughs> in <our church. laughs> yeah, yeah. And the, the pastor said, we've got some good guards. <laughs> good cars, that's for sure. It's sad that we have to have that, but it's sad. In your imagination, I used to tell my students, use your imagination and imagine this or that or the other. In your imagination, think of the approach of these to Peter and John. What do you think what their facial expression might have been? I don't think they were smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Peter was probably ready to, like Norm said, you know, tinderbox. I mean, cut off of the ear or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm thinking of the temple guards and the uh, the uh, ones that were there to uh, approach them and berate them for what they were doing. Mm. Okay, Acts. 4 verse 2. When it gets up there, Kirk, would you read that? Sure. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. Oh my. Mm. Sadducees didn't believe that. Mm. Yeah. Have that you, yeah. Have you ever been, or have you ever been in the presence? Have you ever been yourself or have you ever been in the presence of somebody who was greatly disturbed? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Today. Today. Yeah. Today. Well, you want to share that? And it was my fault. No. Oh, just <laughs> no, but one of us locked a door in the good neighbor place that isn't ordinarily locked and we didn't know that there was a key so we were trying all kinds of ways to shimmy oh. the lock open and uh someone was just like can you just use the credit card i know that's how you do it and they were getting a little upset you know but eventually we found the key <laughs> <laughs> anybody else have an experience along that line greatly disturbed I've had some experience with students. <laughs> I, can, I can especially remember one who did something and in midair, he realized I was standing there watching him <laughs> and uh, he hit the ground. He was greatly disturbed, but he was not disturbed at me. He was disturbed at himself. Yeah. <laughs> And then I had another experience with a uh, with a with a parent. This parent had been a problem from day one. A parent a problem. Parent. <laughs> his his little girl was a, a a a nice little girl, but the dad was absolutely a pill. He was bothering teachers he would come into the classroom and the teacher would have to call me and i would have to escort him off campus so mm -hmm. when the new year began in that particular room we were overcrowded we didn't have enough room for everybody and he was one because of his behavior was taken off the list 
So this happened before school started. I was in my office uh, looking over some of the student rosters and how we were going to cover everything. He came in, his face was red. I was afraid if I had walked around the other side that he was going to attack me. He was in attack mode and he took a tape recorder, slammed it down on my desk, turned it on and he says, we're gonna have it out. And I said, no, we're not. In that tone of voice, I just said, no, no, we're not. Yes, you're going to explain to me, blah, 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 blah. And I said, no, take your tape recorder. Wait for that. And if you want to come back without the tape recorder, after you've cooled off, I'll be willing to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, did he get mad, ranted and raved. And I said, uh, thank you for leaving our campus. I never raised my voice. I never shook my fist, even though I felt like shaking my fist. But uh, I didn't know you were friends with a public school, Jack. <laughs> Not <laughs> all. I've been school. But uh, we we were sorry, really, because the little girl was having to leave and go somewhere else because of her dad's behavior. Mm. And I made him know it's because of you. Mm. Uh, so greatly disturbed. Uh, Watch Little League and you'll see parents that get greatly disturbed. Oh. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> sure. I remember those days. Tennis. Uh, when I was a kid with, with tennis, uh, uh, parents that were, ooh. Yeah, they get disturbed. So they were greatly disturbed with Peter and John. They didn't even take time to talk to Peter and John, but did what? They arrested him. Okay, let's let's go to Acts 4, 3. Maria, why don't you read that? And they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day. But it was already evening. Okay, it's on the screen uh, if you want to read it from that. Oh, that's they all right. Peter John him. Because it was evening, they put them in jail till the next day. I, I like this particular, this is NIV. I like this particular one because of that second word. What is that second word there? They seized. 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 Now, what does that give you an idea if someone seized Forcefully. you? Forcefully. Yes. Forcefully. Angrily. Yes, very angrily. They hold you tight. Yes. You know, it's unbelievable. You know, I just now real uh, learned that the Sadducees, they weren't they weren't leaders in the church. I thought that, you know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were all together in the Sanhedrin, but that's not so. The Sadducees were a separate uh a separate uh, entity of people. They weren't church leaders. And yet over here, <coughs> church leaders followed them. They were they were stubborn. They didn't believe in 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 in, in the resurrection, and that's why they were so mad. But you, <laughs> I, it's amazing you that it says that that the uh, the the priests went with them, and 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 the captain of the temple went. Where'd you get it from that they they weren't part of the Sanhedrin? Yeah. My kids, so my son told me. No, that's they, true. They were separate. They they were they were they, uh, they were not part of the Sanhedrin. But they came no. together. They came together in their uh, enemies. This dislike of Jesus. Yeah. It was kind of like our. It was like our Congress. Yeah. It like, <laughs> it's like our. Con that's right. <laughs> that bad. But it's almost like it's almost like uh, like in our in our church. It'd be a bunch of people who are uh, 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 atheists and and they. They come into the board meeting and then you had everybody riled up, but they were completely against the thought they were, what they believed was against the church, and how they had any 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 pull with uh, with the Pharisees is hard to believe. And you think about we're getting near to the end of time. You think about mm -hmm. we're going to have individuals 
come into our church and seize our leaders right off the platform, probably in some instances. We don't know exactly how it's going to be, but I have a feeling that uh, when the edicts go out, if they can catch any of us worshiping differently, that they're gonna come in and seize us mm -hmm. because they're greatly distressed. I think, uh, Jack, because we're um, making them look bad, like like those, like you made those late those union workers look bad. Excuse me, Hugo. <laughs> Go ahead, Hugo. Uh, I was just going to point out that, back in chapter two, they had won th about three thousand men in their following. I think that would be worrying to to oh. some religious oh, yeah. leader. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, very we're going to read shortly that uh, another 5,000 were on the way. Yeah. This is disturbing. Mm -hmm. This is disturbing because their power and their authority is being threatened. Mind. What was the reason for their, their anger? You know, you know, it always amazes me that they don't care anything about the, the, the things that were done to help people. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they had in the name of Jesus, had healed the person who had been crippled all his life, and they didn't care that he had been healed and that he was in a better life. Yeah. They just worried about the fact that it didn't meet their rules. Didn't meet their rules, that's right. Mm -hmm. And so. they were popular. They were jealous because... Mm -hmm. but apostles were popular just like jesus was popular among the people and they were jealous of that just like anyone you know that does their job right you know the the common workers are going to be mad at you because you know you're making them look bad yeah it's right doing something good <laughs> and, and it, says, it, it says that jesus um when he was doing healings and comforting people and loving people they were jealous in the heart, but angry because they knew what he was doing, they should have been doing, and they wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Kirk, you wanted to make a statement? I, I, I was going to say that they also had the Romans looking over their shoulder, and they were always worried about that in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Always worried about their position. Mm -hmm. Can you think about what could happen with us in the, as we approach the end of time? Here. Mm -hmm. They took Peter and John, threw them in prison. Some of us might end up in prison as we approach the end. Without it's happening around the world, I mean, don't mm -hmm. hear mm -hmm. it's already it's already happening, Mac. That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though we have safeguards in our constitution, when there's national problems those safeguards sort of get tossed out the window. Okay, let's go on to Acts 4.4. 4. <sighs> okay, uh, Kristen, would you read that one? But many who heard the message believed. So the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. 5,000 plus women, children. I mean, this, they were going up. This would have been, I believe, one of the times that they, the, uh, the boys who had reached a certain age, like when Jesus went to the temple, I think maybe they would have been. So it could have been whole family units that were there, but mm -hmm. we only know about the men. I but believe it, there were more women than men. Yeah, could have been many more people than that. Now that that could get their attention, that could get the the uh, priests and all really get their attention. Well, you know, Jack, talking about the last days, uh, we are told that there will be people from all other churches who will see the light of of the truth that that we're uh, preaching and will come and um, if they don't join you know illegally or what do you want to say um uh, th there will still be in in mind and heart 
uh, on the same length, the same um, wavelength as we are. And that would be disturbing to um, other people of other churches that they left. And it would be disturbing perhaps to, to see uh, this growing uh, like it's going to, which would be all the more reason that they would be angry at um, and, and have a Sabbath uh, law, a rule, law. So because they don't want anybody else to, to join and swell the ranks. And probably for the same reason, not necessarily political, but just, I mean, if you take whatever, every, any of the um, popular churches nowadays, if suddenly they grew by, uh, you know, so many thousand every now and then, you know, people would raise their eyebrows. They'd wonder what's going on. And um, so I don't think, I think we, in other words, we're not going to be all alone in this. Mm -hmm. I think there's going to be a, a, a group of people that will be doing that we don't even know who they are at this point, but that they will they will see the difference and and will um, in their heart join uh, in obeying all of God's commandments. So we won't be alone. And I, I think of the word jealous. Yeah, they're going to be so jealous of what is happening. They're going to do everything possible to shut us down. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting time to be alive. So this is incredible. Another time they preached, and how many believed? We already mentioned that. There was uh, yeah, what, 3, 000, 000, and now, now we get 5,000. We're, we're starting to begin to have Girl. a growth multiplying following the person that they thought they were shutting up when they killed Christ. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So how would you have felt if you were part of that ruling class, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the priests and so on? Just like we just mentioned, exactly like we just mentioned, jealousy and, and looking at what's happening there we're losing our power. We're losing our membership. We're losing, 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 and we're going to get in trouble for it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Acts 4, 5 to 12. Can you put that one up? We just read 4. Uh, no, oh. it's Acts 4. Oh, I see. Chapter 4. Yeah, chapter 4. Um. Shirley, can you read that one? It says, the next day, the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Oops. Okay, you can you can go on to 12. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Oh, my word. Wow, wow, wow. Yes. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow is for sure. This is Peter? Yeah. Ah. Think about what he had gone through. How he had changed from that person that he was as a fisherman. And now he's truly what Jesus said, I will make you fishers of men. Mm. Ah. 
I would love to have a recording of his voice mm. as he's standing up there and as, as the people are listening to him. It, it must, the Holy Spirit was there inspiring him on what to say. Wow, what? That, that's a whole sermon right there. That's it. Mm. That's it. The whole thing. So, the words of Peter must have cast a chill over some of the so-called leaders as they tried to keep things under control. The people are learning because of Peter and John and the other disciples. It can't be hidden under a bushel and kept out of sight. It's, it's too late. It's escaped. Uh, I, I think about um, some instances where something gets out and uh, you can't get it back in. You, you, you lose something and it's gone. You whisper something to somebody and by the time it comes around again, it's covered the whole world almost. <laughs> and they were trying to keep it in a basket so that nobody could see it and nobody could hear it, nobody could know about it. And these two completely, as I, as I was going through this, I also had a wonder, did Peter do all the talking or did John have something to say also? Well, we know Peter was outspoken. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That was his nature, but I would imagine they both had their turn. I don't know. I didn't have a chance to look in John to see if he says anything about that. But the uh, caption in my Bible says Peter and John arrested. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they were arrested. They were was, there. I don't know if guilty uh, by I, association. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that, that is comforting to know that you can be, it's, as long as you're doing with with somebody doing the right thing, you get credit for it too. <laughs> not everybody's, not everybody can do that. That's true. There, there are right. those who just witness in a quiet, sweet way. Verse 13 sounds like John. Um, <laughs> you go. Say as well. <laughs> Uh, just a quickie, I mentioned earlier that I visited our hospital, uh, Advent Health, uh, what is it, yesterday, I guess. And uh, I, I, I found it interesting that one of the technicians working there, as I was leaving, took a business card out of his pocket and because I thought it was maybe he had a private practice somewhere. But no, he handed me the card and he said, uh, you know, if, if you find time, have a look at it. You'll find it interesting. So I did look at it. And uh, it, it gave the information of his particular denomination. So I said, oh. No one's ever offered that to me whenever I've gone to Advent Health. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. someone of another denomination mm -hmm. in Advent Health is sharing that with uh, me. Shame on us. Yeah. Uh, just That's an information. We, we can all do that mm -hmm. if we would. Yes. It, it doesn't take very much effort to just pass on a card. Yeah. But, That's uh, a good idea, really. It yeah. really is. I think mm -hmm. about that. <laughs> it would have been good if you had a card to exchange. Yeah. <laughs> Here, take yeah. one of my cards. <laughs> I just so happen to have one also. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if, uh, if, um, if you have maybe a hundred of them working, in different locations, each handing out one of these cards, it could be pretty effective. Yeah. That's actually against the rules. 
Mm -hmm. Uh oh. <laughs> here's here's an administrator speaking. There you go. <laughs> it's, a reason, it's a reason why I'm hesitating yeah. to, uh, <laughs> to find a location. But, what do you uh, say about uh, that, Mac? Well, but uh, but you know, you're not forbidden to pray with people as long as no, you get no their problem. permission. I don't think I don't know if passing out true. literature is different in that. Um, we have always been protective of our right to avoid uh, bargaining. And mm -hmm. if you're allowed to do it, then why wouldn't somebody else be allowed to do it? And so HR has always had a policy of, of non, it's a, it's a non-solicitation policy to avoid the possibility of, of, uh, of unionization. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh, so that's why I said this, you're really not supposed to pass out material. That doesn't mean you can't do other things that are, support our mission. Like you said, asking people if they want to have prayer, people do that all the time. Um, but there is a flying technicality about uh, distributing uh, information and putting information up on a bulletin board. Um, they, they try to be real careful about that. There are other places, though, we yeah, could, just, you know, a person just, could do that. Yeah, just yeah. walking down the street. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. At a restaurant, leave a little card on your table. <laughs> um, Jack, maybe yes. it's very timely also that in an atmosphere where is it, um, Louisiana is wanting Bible to be taught in school, Alabama is wanting the Ten Commandments to be posted, in public places, but now other entities are saying, well, if you can do that with your material, uh, we want our stuff mm -hmm. um, right. uh, publicized. The Louisiana Authority, you're right, Hugo, they, uh, they, they want to have the Ten Commandments uh, in public display in, uh, in all of the schools. And what if you're Catholic? You will want the Catholic Ten Commandments up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they don't mm -hmm. even keep the Fourth Commandment anyway, so mm -hmm. none of them do. And then they want the, the Quran up there, and they want to do yeah. Well, just give it out when you, give, when you when you give a tip. Give it out when you give a tip. And say, <laughs> yeah, for the exactly. for the rest and for the rest of your tip. The best tip you'll ever get. Go to this website. Or something there you like go. <laughs> I like that. Hugo, like you, you had wanted to finish. Oh, just to observe that my understanding is that a Satanist group is saying that yes, we would like to um, have the same freedoms that you're giving to the uh, Judeo-Christian um, religion, or let's say. And we, in fact, we, we would like to place our chaplains, some of our chaplains in your schools too. Yeah, that is that is an issue. I just read in the paper about that. That is an issue on the in the in the legislature right now because there is a move to have chaplains available. And so the Satanists say, well, if you allow chaplains, then then we have every right to to come in. Be there. Exactly. Yeah, that was on TV today, too. There was some mm. talk about that. Mm -hmm. It's coming, folks. Mm -hmm. so, yes, it is. Yes, uh, it is. It's it, coming. It, you know, and when the Constitution gets changed. Oh, yeah. Old, oh, yeah. Know. Yeah. We're, okay, we're, let's, uh, let's go on. Um, You've got six minutes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Acts 4, 13 to 17. And let's see, who hasn't read yet? Norm. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished. And they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Hmm. But since they could see the the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then conferred together. What are we going to do with these men? They asked. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows they have performed 
a notable sign and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Good luck with that one. <laughs> what does Mac have to say about that? <laughs> <laughs> Stop those things from spreading. Oh, my word. And since we don't have very much more time, let's go ahead. Um, the last part is Luke. Oh, let, me, let me get it up just a second. Or 18 to 22. Okay, just a second. This is what they... <laughs> did after their little uh, get together, their huddle. And um, let's see, who hasn't read? I haven't. Oh, okay. How could I do that? I've been busy, but yeah, then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eyes to listen to you or to him? You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. After further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. Oh, man. So what, what did that really mean? Here was this man. He was 40 years old. Why is that mentioned by the writer? Well, because they realized uh, people knew him. They knew that, yes. that he was sick. They knew, and, and it wasn't like a, a flesh in the pan. He wasn't a stranger. He was somebody that was known in the, in the town. So there was no way to deny that he was crippled. Yeah. He was there at the gate probably for 40 years. time that he could be carried out there. And everybody knew him. They knew him. And they didn't care that the guy had been healed. All they cared about was, uh, you know, incredible. incredible. It is. And then I, th I think about what Peter said in his sermon. What will be your sermon? Hmm. What gems have you laid up that you can? Uh, it, I can, I can see the priest and all. <gasps> you know, he's speaking all that. We can't deny it. We can't, we can't throw them into prison. We can't do it. We're sunk. All what? they can do is threaten them. All they can do is threaten them. All they can do is threaten them. So worse. I think I think we need to have some of these in our mind to um, let the authorities know when they come after us. I've been with Jesus so long. I cannot do anything against him. He's my we Savior. We have to obey God rather than men. Yes, mm -hmm. rather than men. Absolutely. Um, Kristen, would you do our... Uh, prayer time now. I uh, see there's seven in the chat. Uh, Kristen may not have been on when some of them came on. Uh, were, yeah, were... But the one that I that's I'm starting with is please pray for my nephew from Shirley. Please pray for my nephew and family who lost his wife recently that they will have hope and comfort. This is the first one that I have. Okay. Then the, prior to that, were there two others for Ruth, Carla? Amanda and Kathy, and then a prayer for our granddaughter who broke her arm. Oh. Mm. That that Ruth we've been praying for. They um, they went to I don't know if it's the same place that that uh, Carlos went, but they they went to Mexico. Mexico. Um, because she didn't want to do she didn't want to have to do chemo or radiation. And um, they will. They had done research and found out that people had been successful. It's just very expensive. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 
So they're praying that these treatments will help her. Mm. All right, let's pray. Oh, Hugo. Oh, uh, I, know, I know we have time against us, but I, I just felt that as a church, as a, as a health system, that we, 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 we might have a message for people who have these challenges. Um, coming at it from a, from a spiritual source. Yes. But we can talk another time about that. Yeah. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for an opportunity to get together. Thank you for Jack preparing the lesson tonight. And the study is yeah. so inspiring and interesting and motivating. And we pray that in our spheres, each of us will take the opportunity to tell others what you mean to us. Mm -hmm. And we want to lift up some of the prayer requests that has been listed for Ruth that Mac was just talking about and the treatments that are needed and the expense. And we just pray that things will come together for her, that she will trust you, that you will bring comfort and healing. Pray for Carla and Amanda and Kathy, and we pray for Jack and Carol's granddaughter who just broke her arm. Please, Lord, comfort and heal her well. And I want to lift up Shirley and Hugo's nephew and and their family who he lost his wife recently. Um, please, Lord, give them hope and comfort. Yeah. May they know that that she was resting in Jesus, that she's not floating around somewhere or mm. anything like that, and give them peace, I pray. Mm. Also be with Elba as she continues to uh, grieve the loss of her brother that she came here for. And be with Tony. We pray that you will continue to help and bless in his recovery. And think that's it lord all these things we pray that you know we pray for healing we pray that you will also bring spiritual healing in, in each case just like it says in the bible where someone was healed physically they're also experiencing forgiveness and a change a spiritual change in their lives and we all need this god we're no better as hugo said at the very beginning you know peter said that you have done this but he wasn't really including himself but we want to include ourselves in that that we have done this just like daniel when he prayed he prayed that we have sinned against god and even mm -hmm. though there's nothing in the bible that he ever sinned that daniel ever sinned that we know of and so help us to be humble help us to be your servants Lord, and look for those opportunities where we can serve others. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for watching the Serendipity Bible Study Group of the Apopka Seventh-day Adventist Church. We meet live on Zoom every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time for one hour. We invite you to join us on Zoom whenever you can. Just click the link in the description of this video and feel free to leave us a comment or a prayer request. If you can't join us live, you can always watch like you are now. Thank you.